Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here, coming at you from SHOT Show 2024, the Knife Center. I'm here at the Spyderco booth with the one and only, Eric Lesser. He's gonna take us through some of the reveal number four products right now. All what right. do we got here? Okay, um, we do have a, quite, a fun, quite a lot of fun knives here. I'm gonna start with kitchen knives. Um, these were revealed uh, shortly ago in the last reveal, but we're getting very close to delivery. So I thought I would uh, show these. Um, these are called counter puppies. They come in uh, a blue and a green. They're designed so that you can set them on the counter and that the edge isn't hitting the, uh, the table or the food's not getting on the table so that it's nice and clean. Also, I think safer for the kitchen user who's running around the kitchen. Since the blade's not sticking up, you're less likely to make contact with your hands or Not something rolling too. around and bouncing. Yeah, exactly. um, this is becoming more and more popular in Japan. Mm -hmm. Kitchen knives that stand upright, you know, a lot like the chopsticks. They have the chopstick holder mm -hmm. to keep the chopstick off the yep. table. Well, now you can keep your, your, your knife off the table. Make a good steak knife too, I think, honestly. Yeah, it's, it's got some great flair at the top, so you can hold it this way and get really into some nice cutting. Um, it has some expansion at the back. It fits the three hands, or you can get into it a little bit tighter. Um, for the bevel and the full flat, it does work well for a steak knife type application. Uh, it comes in a, um, a 6CR17, mm -hmm. so it's going to be a little bit more corrosive resistant than some of the 8CR13 MOV knives okay. that we've done in the past. Um, but yeah, it's a nice, uh, inexpensive, uh, high performance little kitchen knife. And you can get it in plain edge as well as yeah. the serrated plain edge, edge too. Yeah. Serrated, purple, green. Uh, nice cute counter puppies. Very nice. Um, then to go uh, to another level where these are more of a high quality piece, we, we were, were working with Murray Carter uh, on a set of knives. Uh, this one is the Giotto, um, but they're, um, they come in a few different versions. Right now we deliver them in a super blue laminate with a burl G10, gorgeous pieces. Is it super blue or super white? I can't remember. Super now. blue. Okay. Um, and so now we're going to go into the uh, the BD1N version with the black G10. Uh, bd bit, bit more of a workhorse version. A little bit more of a workhorse version. version, but still very high performance. Mm -hmm. The uh, the, the uh, super blue tends to corrode a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. um, gets a patina on it, and so the BD1N is going to be uh, more corrosive resistant, um, it, a little bit easier to work with for some people. Sure. Uh, the G10, because it's not the burled G10 with the white stripe and everything, it's also going to bring you the performance and weight of the burled ones, mm -hmm. uh, but it lower the cost on the G10. Um, the BD1 gives you a nice thin stock with a thin edge, mm -hmm. which is what we're looking with with the kitchen knife. If you get into a higher carbon type steel, um, oftentimes the thinner you get, they want to chip out. And so the BD1N gets thin um, without getting that chip, but mm -hmm. gives you a lot of performance and corrosion resistance. Um, and then it, 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 uh, it comes in the whole family, comes with the octagon shaped handle, um, fits the hand tremendously well. It, it just fits those little facets of the it fingers. Does. It's highly evolved in Japan for a very long time, this shape handle. And I love the way you guys have treated the, the front and the back ends by kind of rounding over any of the sharp edges there. Yeah. So it, there's nothing that's gonna stick out and bite you. It feels it's really good. Not too much, not too little. Yeah. It's got a nice polish to it. Also, it, it flares nicely, mm -hmm. which isn't as, as easy. A lot of these guys just make them nice and straight. Yep. Um, and so the balance, the weight, uh, Working with Murray Carter, he's, these are beautifully designed knives. I mean, he knows what he's doing. And he does, and so uh, it's a pleasure to get to work with him. So yeah, that's uh, into our kitchen knives. And then uh, you want to get into the folders? Yeah, let's do it. That's right. what everyone really wants to see. Um, the first one we're going to show is uh, the Rex 45 series. Uh, some of these have already hit the, the line mm -hmm. um, or the market. We're going to continue to push them. Everything we make in the U.S. is going to come in a Rex 45 version, at least for a sprint run. So the whole the whole lineup eventually. The whole lineup, Very yeah. Cool. That's, that's the plans currently. Very so cool. we make it in a lightweight and a G10. Uh, the lightweight and G10 match very well, which they do. is also very a close challenge. In color, yeah. Making custom colors and lightweights and G10s mm -hmm. is a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, the Rex 45 is a non stainless steel, comes with a lot of cobalt, gets a patina, performs very well, um, gets thin, uh, gets hard, mm -hmm. stays sharp. Um, so if you like Rex 45 or um, have used it, uh, it's got a great reputation, gets a patina. Also, with the, the um, the burnt orange overuse gets a little 
bit of its flavor. And Maybe so the with oils of your hand the kind oils, of work and into so it. With the, yeah, the patina yeah. of the blade and the burnt orange uh, brings it a nice look over time. Which I, I, And I like the way you've used that color again here because you kind of used it with the, the Hap 40 knives you had right. a little bit ago, which the steels are very similar between those Extremely Rex 45. Similar. Yeah. yeah, if you look at the chemistries, they're almost identical. So the uh, Rex 45 is kind of the U.S. take on the Japanese Hap the 40. Hap 40 that's, right. that's really cool. Um, and so if you do, if yeah, if you like the Rex 45 in the American series, certainly look at the Hap 45 Japanese series. Mm -hmm. uh, beautiful stuff. Yeah. Um, very it cool. Is. I, I believe you guys used Hat 40 on the pack of woods. We did. Yeah. Uh, Knife Center exclusive yeah. uh, Endura, Delica, Dragonfly, and Ladybug, yeah. all with Hat 40 that was and a uh, the pack combination. of woods. Those yeah. work, work very those well. Were. We love I, them. I don't think you have any of those anymore. Do you? Uh, some, I think. Do you? We still really? Yeah, uh, we'll have to beautiful check. pieces. We'll leave links in the description. Yeah. You guys can find Be out if we have them pieces. left or not. <laughs> yeah, good choice, you guys. Um, okay, so the next one I'm going to get into is designed by Michael Janich. Um, he's, he's a premier in his expertise in self-defense um, for tactical folders. Uh, he's known for his Warren clips primarily. Mm -hmm. The Yojimbo 2 is one of his most popular designs he's done. This is all blacked out though. If you, if you want to get a Yojimbo um, from Mike, a lot of these guys want it all black and when they want it all black, all it black. really all, all needs black. to be black. Um, and so the edge is the only part on this that's not. Mm -hmm. um, I would imagine they could touch that with a Sharpie if they wanted to get it. Was that important? Yeah. Um, but yeah, in but the, the dark, liners, everything is all blacked yeah, out. It, yeah, uh, it's going to be blacked out. We don't want any reflection on this piece. For sure. And For so sure. It, it brings everything that uh, Michael Janich uh, has in the marketplace to an all blacked out. Piece. Same specs otherwise to the yep. standard. All same, same steel, all yep. that. Yep, nice what type piece. of what type of coating are we working with here? Uh, I think this is DLC. Um, nearly positive. Uh, Mike would know. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Uh, the next one I'm going to go over is a flash batch. This was designed by Michael Birch. Uh, Michael Birch has been making knives for decades. Great guy. If you get to know him, he knows his knives. He makes quality mm -hmm. pieces. Usually back ordered. <laughs> um, the, one of the things I like about Michael Birch is his knives are made to use. They've and used. they've been proven in the marketplace. People mm -hmm. have used them, they like them, or, or they don't like them, but typically they like them for everything they bring to the market. Um, so his and this knives, is instantly recognizable his, as his style, too. Oh, it jumps off the page. Little, yeah. More users. Yeah. It's got a little bit thicker all across the board mm -hmm. than a lot of spider codes you're accustomed to. So if you're looking for something a little thicker, more use, mm -hmm. uh, Michael does a lot of that. Definitely. I mean, we're working with, it's a little bit over an eighth of an inch thick here on yeah, the blade nice, stock. Yeah, a nice yeah. stock. Uh, so it's going to hold up quite yeah, well, Yeah, it's more I think. than an eighth of an inch. I want to yeah. say it's 145, but yeah. uh, I'm just roughing it off the top of yeah. my head. Uh, rounded. It gets green. so we look at this stuff all the time. Our eyes can almost uh, tell exactly I what think they it's are. One. Right there. <laughs> uh, so it has titanium liners. Also, nice. it's a nice thick stock in there. So that lockup is going to be nice and solid. It doesn't have an interface. Some of the knives with titanium locks, we put interfaces. Mm -hmm. Some we don't. A lot of that has to do with the thickness of the blade, the thickness of the titanium, the mm -hmm. length of the blade, what the application of the knife is. Sometimes you want that thick titanium and that thick blade just because everything mends well. Mm -hmm. When you put that stainless interface, you're putting a lot of hard against hard. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, it's great for something like a flipper oftentimes because you're just pounding that over right. and over. Right. And you want we that, like to fidget. Yeah, yeah, you want that harder surface. But sometimes if you're gonna you know, go to town and really work with a knife, mm -hmm. getting that more malleable titanium thick on that thick Interesting. Um, just gives you a lot of strength. And so Interesting. it is just titanium. Um, Yep, it is. Uh, with a ball detent, has a little curve on the ramp, 20 CV blade steel, uh, rounded green, customized clip. The customized clip has the three screw torques. Um, so you're really getting a real Michael Birch. We mm -hmm. want you to feel like you're getting a Michael Birch. And flash batch, so limited production. Oh, yeah, 1,200 serialized. pieces. Every single one's numbered on the inside of the liner. Very cool. So you'll have to take a light and look at it. And it's not just numbered one of 1,200. It, every single one is numbered two, Excellent. three, four. Mm -hmm. So you're getting your unique piece. Very cool. Comes in a zipper pouch, and then uh, one and done. We're done with the tooling after that. 
get rid so, of it, you break it. We're, we're done, yeah. <laughs> so the um, the other two flash batches we did was uh, with Pekka Tuominen. Mm -hmm. It was called the Little Nalaka, white G10, nice. gorgeous piece. And he does beautiful work. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. work. Beautiful. Just just like Michael Birch, beautiful. Yeah. Uh, then we had the pleasure of uh, a Bob Lum Darn Dow. Mm -hmm. um, again, Bob Lum just built beautiful knives when Indeed. he made them. Uh, the Darn Dow is one of his best. He even had a tapered tang. Mm -hmm. um, and now it's a Michael Birch. And so, you know, these are some of the, the great designers in our industry, and we're looking forward to more flash batches. Great. That's awesome. Okay. The next one is designed by uh, Lance Clinton. It's called the Siren. It's made in the U.S. It's a salt. It comes with a blue and black G10. So it's not blue liners. Earlier. Yeah, it's, it's actual part of the laminate itself, part right. of the actual same, same it, piece. It's not going to peel off. Also, it's linerless. And so it brings you great weight, mm -hmm. um, but a, a very dynamic look. The edge and the, the, the blade shape itself, um, I'm, I'm a big fan of. The way the edge kind of works flat and all the way up. Mm -hmm. If you're doing um, filleting a knife if, or filleting fish, mm -hmm. um, which Lance Clinton really knows his fillet, uh, filleting of, of, of fish, it's his he, profession. he's on the water constantly. Yeah. Certainly yeah. look him up, he's, he's, it's his profession, he knows his stuff, mm -hmm. it's great working with a guy with him that really knows blade shapes like he does. Um, the, the handle itself has a great guard in the front so you're not going to slide up on it, but it fits the hand in the back and it fit, accommodates all shapes. Mm -hmm. He, he gave a great look here too. It almost looks like a wave. Mm -hmm. um, and that was kind of the feel. So not only does it look neat, has kind of that wave, that guard, that blue, brings all that, that aqua feel to the knife. Um, and we're LC200N on this blade LC200N, as well, right? LC200N, yep. So Love that steel. Extremely corrosive yeah. resistant, works great uh, for edge resistance. Um, deep pocket wire clip that's also reversible. And then he's got the lander hole all the way to the end mm -hmm. for the, the guy that is going to use the lanyard. Sure. Um, and so uh, the yeah. back lock, we're really proud of on this one. The action, the self-close, the open, the button, the H, mm -hmm. the, the fit and finish. It's just U.S. It high it quality back lock. Here. Yeah. You know, you're, if you're looking for a knife that's going to perform when you need it, a back lock is tough to beat. Yeah. When this thing comes open, it opens. It's ready to go. Oh, man. Oh, no. Yep. First spider bite of the day. So this one, it's funny I just did that. With all, <laughs> but with most back locks, hmm, it has a, a dull spot here so that you can close it and drop it on your finger. Mm -hmm. So does this one, but it's really it's far really up. Small. <laughs> you gotta kind of mm -hmm. see and you're not gonna drop it on there. Yeah. And so I'm not cutting myself there. I am cutting myself there. So I'm gonna go get a rag. Yeah, let's take care of that. <laughs> Eric's back. He's now back. he's bandaged up. Bandaged on my um, finger. But I'm telling you, I, I love this guy. Um, Beautiful it's knife. one of my favorites here on the table. Carries nice and thin. I love that steel. I've used it in one of your Spidey Chefs for a while. Performs great. And in addition to kind of the watery, the the aquatic uses, I think this might make a pretty good backup tactical knife as well. I mean, you got good a, for all uses. You got a really good amount of traction on this G10. It's a little bit heavier of a of attraction. You got a really nice finger guard. And that thin blue line, of course, yeah. adds to that kind of, that whole thing. Yeah. Really, really cool knife. I, I like that a lot. Just you know, when you close it, keep your finger keep all your finger out of the way. way. You're making me nervous. <laughs> You're making me nervous there. <laughs> all right, what, okay. what do we have next? Uh, next is the Pacific Two. Um, just like the LC Two Hundred N, this uses a extremely corrosive resistant steel. It's H One. Um, I encourage people to look into H1. It's an austenitic nitrogen-based steel mm -hmm. that just is amazing stuff. Um, this one updates the Pacific be with its handle mostly. It's got a little bit better in its ergos, closer to the Endura 4. It's got a bi-directional texturing. It has a four-way clip where the old one had a volcano texturing and a single mm -hmm. or, or a two-way directional yeah. clip. Yeah, tip-up um, only. Yeah. yeah, still has the lanyard, has a larger thumb hole, uh, so you can still get to it with gloves, has a little bit more reinforced tip. Mm -hmm. um, and so it, uh, if you're looking for that more stout knife, it, it's going to be good over the Endura as far as that goes, but it's actually lighter than, than the Endura. It's lighter and a little bit thicker too, right? Right. Uh, the lightness, uh, the lighter because because of the no liners mm -hmm. um, and then the thicker because it has inserted threads now um, and we wanted a little bit more for the handle and the gloves sure and so it is lighter but it has the threaded inserts with four-way and no liners 
And is that going to be available in the yellow as well, or just yeah, black? For it now? will be in yellow. Okay. I mean, um, it is a, a beautiful evolution of the Pacific. Um, we're going to be doing that across the board for a lot of our knives. Mm -hmm. I think a year or two ago we did the Salt 1, went to the Salt 2. Now the Pacific's going to the Pacific 2. And we're going to continue to develop some of the nicest salt knives in the world. Great. Uh, next is uh, a knife we call the Watu. Um, it's based off a Chakwe design, mm -hmm. which is an ethnic piece from Central Africa. Um, those knives are typically used with this kind of blade shape, which is similar to a Warren Cliff, but it tends to curve up a little bit at the tip. Uh, it has a, a chopped point or a clip point. Um, has almost like a reverse coffin handle. If you look at this style of knife in Africa, it's stayed this style for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. Um, and for a lot of reasons, it's very functional. Yeah, most in fact, of it reminds me a bit actually of some of like the Nordic broken back sax shapes, but it's completely different uh, culture. Just shows you that things work universally. Yeah, you know, I, I think of the other ethnic series or ethnic knives around mm -hmm. the world too. They're all very odd looking many times, mm -hmm. but so functional. Yeah. Um, so um, this fits the hand quite well. Most of the time you'll see them with holes if you find them in Africa, and that's really? because they can tie them to a spear, oh, interesting. Um, use them mm -hmm. uh, for the end of a stick. So we have the holes there for ours. comes with full liners and a compression lock, uh, so it brings that modern locking, functional folding action to the market. Sure. Very good action. Uh, it comes with a, a carbon fiber layer G10, so it gives you that beauty and feel of the carbon fiber, uh, but the, the layer of the G10 underneath. Nice, um, substantial Torx screws with a deep pocket wire clip, well nice, built. Nice thin steel too. And 20 CV. Yeah, um, very nice. Usually um, at the African uh, chalkways are usually covered in rust because they use the tool steel. Mm -hmm. And so the 20 CV is going to give you a lot of tough, um, but also corrosion resistance and give you that thin. It's going to slice so it's, really nicely. Oh, it's a, it's a I, beautiful piece. I like where, when, when held in the hand, I like where the tip of the knife sits. It's going to be very useful for just all kinds of utility stuff, opening boxes and packages, which a lot of us, that's the most we use our knives nowadays. This is going to be really nice. Yeah, it is a use. pleasure to carry. Very really cool. Is. All right, this next one's called the Astute. Um, this is made in China. Uh, it's to add to our value series, a lot like the Tenacious or mm -hmm. the Efficient. Which are great knives. Great knives. Great knives. Uh, this one's going to be thinner than some of our other value mm -hmm. folders. Thinner in its blade stock, thinner in its carry. Uh, it's also going to give you a lot of edge um, mm -hmm. ratio for the size of the knife. To quickly compare, there's a Tenacious. Uh, and the Tenacious in a small, in the closed package is, is much larger. Mm -hmm. and so you're going to get a lot of edge in this knife, a little bit easier to carry, a little bit lower in its cost. Because it's also not as tall, and we still wanted that great slice, mm -hmm. you can bring that bevel down a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a full flat, has a good guard in the front and back so it won't slide on you too much. The clip uh, gets pretty deep, but it's a stamped hourglass with a peel ply G10 liner lock with a a great 50 thou liner, which is what you want on something at least of this size. Sure. Um, so yeah, it's nice and smooth in the pocket. I love the shape of it. It has a, a very nice organic feel going on. And all of the value series folders, what I like that you guys have done, is that edge comes all the way back to the handle. Yeah. So you're not, you're not wasting any space around the pivot. You're not having to deal with that dead space. And you can still hit it with a sharp maker. Right. Works very well. Right. This is probably, between this and the uh, the other LC200 folder here, these are my picks so far. I like these a lot. Yeah, I, I, we're hoping that does quite well. If I'm gonna, for, for what you pay, for what you get, that brings a lot of value. And it has kind of this little bit of a Canadian belt knife flare going on. You, you know, see a little bit of that. Um, it was also designed in collaboration with a guy from Hungary named um, Gabor Zirconi. He did okay. the Hungarian folder with us. Okay, yeah. Um, but uh, you do see some of that flair as well. It's very cool. Um, so yeah, beautiful design. Uh, next is the Tenacious family. So we're staying light uh, with value folders here. Spyderco does a lot of lightweights. Uh, we're really, we've been doing molding for a long time. Very well known for it, do it very well. I think yeah. the first one we did was the Endurin Delica in mm -hmm. 1990, I believe. I mm -hmm. think we're, we're coming up on our a 30, 30th <laughs> year anniversary. So um, we're continuing to push lightweights. Lightweights gives you that three-dimensional handle, gives you great texture, gives you colors, gives you cost, gives you performance. Mm -hmm. um, and so we're continuing to develop our lightweights. Um, so you're going to get your bi-directional texturing, your four-way clip that you're known for with Spyderco. This has full liners. With a lot of the lightweights, we're giving them nested liners mm -hmm. um, or no liners at all, really going lightweight. Right. Like, um, for instance, the, the salt there, right. or the Pacific uh, too. This will be the only lightweight, I believe, that we've made with full liners. 
Um, so so it, you're still going to get a lot it of rigidity does. It there. gives you a lot yeah. of rigidity and balance and performance, but also what you get with, with that lightweight. It's not mm -hmm. too heavy, but not too, too light. Um, and the Tenacious has always been a great workhorse knife, so you don't want to sacrifice that, right. that too much. A lot of yeah. people like that in their hands. Yeah. Um, and so uh, it gives you that great guard, that edge that gets all the way back, like we talked about, the jimping that really bites you back, um, so you're not going to slide around For on sure. it. Um, so we are hoping that this will just add to the reputation that Tenacious already has. All right, next is, we're actually coming out with this in a Manix first, and I believe a Para 3 lightweight. Mm -hmm. But we didn't have those to bring it to show yet molded, uh, though we were already molding Native 5s. Sure. Um, so this is a, a color of a unique steel we're going to be introducing called CPM Spy 27. Which, tell me more about that. I mean, the whole internet right now is... What is that? What, are, what do you got going on? Tell um, us about it. So, with steel, we like to think about um, developing it, and oftentimes when we're developing it, we have a premise to the concept. Mm -hmm. um, with, with a lot of steels, it's, oh, get it more to a stainless, and we want more than 13% chrome, mm -hmm. um, or, or whatever it may be. Like for H1, for example, it was really nitrogen. Let's get some nitrogen in there and start playing with what that does to steel. Mm -hmm. And since then, S35VN and a lot of steels have really dabbled with nitrogen mm -hmm. and continued to push the levels of nitrogen. So with SPY27, we're really starting to play with cobalt. Okay. That's why it's called SPY, because it's Spider Co. 27. That's for the atomic um, number on the oh, periodic cobalt. table okay, gotcha. on cobalt. And so we're taking the cobalt as its basic concept, which we've been told and agree with in many ways makes everything better. <laughs> um, and it's mix and it's performance. And then we're starting to work its way out from there. And so it's very similar in your S30Bs family because it, it was developed with crucible um, but it really used cobalt as that basis um, it's new to the market for us it's still powderized and, and homogenous like you get all the other powdered steels and we want to get it into the marketplace as far as uh, wear resistance and toughness and corrosion resistance we think it's right there in that family of other powdered metals that cpm is making like or crucible industries mm -hmm. like your s30d's um, it's not going to patina as much as like a Rex 45, sure. which just has a lot of cobalt as well, mm -hmm. but this is a non-stainless, right. where this is a stainless. And so it really just continues to, to develop and evolve steels. Okay. And we'll see where it goes from here. And it's all you guys. No one else has it. It's yeah, it's all a, you. <laughs> yeah, it, it's only for Spider Co. So we're excited to bring Spy 27 to the market. Very cool. Uh, the next one is also a, an evolution of steel that is super exciting as well. Uh, this is CPM 45VN. Uh, Crucible debuted, I believe, in October. So we actually have, is this one mislabeled? No, this one actually says S30 on it. It does say S30V. <laughs> in production, it will be CPM 45VN. I think we just put, yep, yeah, see this one's that one has it, And yeah. even this one has an asterisk on it. Um, because it's not actual CPM 45VN. We so these are the te these are the proto yeah, or these test are mules right here, um, but they will be the S45. This is what it'll look like though in production. <laughs> you're you're going to get a, a green G10 that has this added texture to it. And I, I really I like that texture a lot. It feels really good. Not too deep. Right. It's neat. It's it's something a little bit different. Yeah. And I like that color as well. It grabs the thumb in any direction. That's what you're looking for yeah. in the texture, and it doesn't rip up the pocket. Uh, we're calling it Diamond important. Arc, we're, other, we're playing with other textures too. Mm -hmm. um, but we wanted to get 45VN into the market quick. And so you guys we did. Could test it I too. mean, it was um, debuted, we think, like October last year in 2019. Right. So you must have called them day one as soon uh, as jumped they jumped right on it. <laughs> uh, we got test through right away. So we already know what we think of the steel. Mm -hmm. um, but we want to get it into the market and see what the market thinks sure. about the steel. Sure. And so um, because there's so much S30V and S35V in, in the works right now for not only us, for probably most people. Mm -hmm. We wanted to jump in with a unique color and a sprint and get it out. Sure. Also with the Para 2 and the Para 3, they're proven knives and designs. You're really you're going to be buying a knife that you know is going to work so that you get an opportunity to use the steel. And great for collectors, too, yeah. that like to collect those platforms. So we don't know where it's going to go from here. It, someday it might replace S30V and S35VN. Um, but right now, let's Depends get all on you guys. Yeah, you know, we're performance-based, and we listen to the market, the, the consumer, the So boss. we'd say it's, it's probably not a, a dramatic difference from the S35s, but maybe a little bit more edge retention, a little bit more stainless qualities to it. We're seeing some of that, but I want to get it out into the market to really prove it. Sure. You know, if you know about Spyderco, we don't publish our test results. 
you know, we don't publish our rock wells. Mm -hmm. We really don't get into a lot of that stuff because it's open for so much debate. Sure. You know, when you get into a rock well, oftentimes companies will go for a three-point spread. Um, well, which three points? Right. You know, and if you are which very, one you're talking Rockwell? That is a fairly big. Oh, right. Big you difference go from 59 to 61. That's a big difference. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, what what our edge test results are, and what our Rockwells are, and everything we think works best for us, and we're performance based. But let's get into the market and see what people think out there as well. Um, Great. So yeah, 45 EN, exciting stuff. I guess for what they were trying to achieve, the first thing they did is they upped the chrome. Mm -hmm. They got it to 20% to chrome mm -hmm. uh, or 0.2% point, point point chrome. Two, yeah. um, so now it's a, it's a really high stainless or much more stainless and you get a lot of more chromium carbides. Mm -hmm. They also added niobium, which is a fun carbide. A little bit less vanadium, but with all the chrome and the niobium and the added carbon, um, mm -hmm. it, it, should, it should work great. Even on paper, it looks great. With our tests, it looks great. And now let's it's see up how to you it guys. Rolls, yeah, you know? very cool. So 45 EN. Like I said, I love the G10, the way that turned out on there. It's a really cool texture and it looks great. And I mean, we got a lot of black knives on the table, but there's a lot of black knives out there. So I always like seeing something a little bit different, but it's not too shouty either. It's a really right. good color. The green is a nice, nice, yeah. nice to get it out with. Yeah, it's really nice. Uh, the next is uh, a bit of a dagger, almost yeah, a dagger. Uh, it's symmetrical all the way through. That's for the guard, the holes the blade grinds. Um, trying to do that in production is its own challenge. You know, when you have a fit and finish, it's a perfect polish like this with a full tang. Um, you really want to make sure everything's working right and symmetrical all the way through. Uh, and then the, the pinning we made into lanyards as well so that you can tie it to a stick or tie other things to it. Mm -hmm. The guard is there so that it's uh, nice and safe, not going to fall, slip up on it too easily. The back is rounded so that if it's in your boot, for instance, it's uh, not rubbing and tearing up your skin too much. Same mm -hmm. with the polish. It's going to ride nicely against against the skin. Sure. Um, the grind is is we're very proud of and how symmetrical we were able to achieve. Single Getting edge though, right? Not, single not edge. Double edge. Yeah, and you can tell the non-sharpened side by our trademark round hole. That's a, that's a good. In addition to maintaining the trademark, it's easy to to, to tell spot. right away which right. one you know which direction um, you're pointing without having to. Certainly, I always closely. suggest people, you know, you don't want to end up with a Band-Aid on your finger. And with the sheath... Ask him how he knows. Yeah. <laughs> you want to put it in right, you know. Yeah. You can take this knife and flip it around and drop it in. And the sheath does have a thumb push off. So you do want to pay attention a little bit of what yeah. you're doing. Yeah. And so, you know, the hole's there to kind of reference. Make sure you put it in the sheath right. Not all people do a thumb push off. Sometimes they just draw it. But if you do like the thumb push off, it makes you feel a little bit more secure to not have that edge right there. Definitely. Um, our sheaths, we're always proud of. It, it, it uh, snaps in well, doesn't rattle. It lets water out. Uh, it's a nice clean sheath with a G-clip on, G on the back. Nice. It works in a lot of different positions. If you're looking for a boot knife, a traditional style boot knife. It definitely has a little bit of that well. vibe, yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, Gail Bradley designed this. Great designer, uh, works well. Uh, for for most applications, it doesn't just have to be a boot knife type application. So. Very cool. Yeah. All right. Well, last but not least, we're on to the final knife here. Yeah. We you know, some people have seen this because we did show it at Blade Show, but it wasn't officially revealed. Um, this is the Chaparral, the next series in the Chaparrals. Which um, is a great, I think one of the most underrated knives you guys make, because it's a phenomenal, phenomenal oh, design. If you're looking for high quality pieces, the Chaparrals are tough to beat. Um, high quality and easy to carry too, oh, because of thin, the size. Um, very functional, reliable. Mm -hmm. The first one was carbon fiber, then we did titanium triangles, the steps, titanium, titanium steps. Yeah. Uh, and, and the lightweight version. Nobles, lightweights, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this just continues to push the envelope. Uh, we call it the sun and moon. So you have the sun and the moon. Um, I guess one of the parts we're most proud of with this is that red and white G10. When you're making these perfect fit and finishes and the high polishes, the colors want to bleed. Mm -hmm. Or you want to see, you tend to see gaps in there. Or a or little bit of breakout or something. Yeah, yeah, it's just so easy to mess these things up. Yeah. And so we did. We have, it is. It's seamless. You, know, you got none of that going on. None of it. You don't see any bleeding. You don't see any gaps. It's perfect fit and finish as well as for the pearl side for the moon. Um, so we're very proud of that fit and finish. And then for the lock back, it's the same way. For a lock back, you want that button to be perfect when it's opened, to be perfect when it's closed. Mm -hmm. You want that H to be all lined up and just where it needs to be. You want that lock up to be solid. Yep. You want the self-close to be 
good, you want the button to be the right position, the right strength. I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to make a high quality back lock. And this again, brings that to the plate. Indeed. Um, with a deep pocket wire clip. And again, thin to carry, nice thin blade steel, yeah. XHP. XHP, so you have a stainless D2 mm -hmm. um, that's been powderized, which is just so fun to play with. Um, at least that's the concept between XHP. Right, right. You don't get a lot of it this, these days because of the costs and lead times, but uh, we try to get ahead of it and continue to bring XHP sure, to the market. Great. I like the color on that white too. It's not a stark white. It's a little bit off-white, almost ivory. It looks is. really good. Yeah, it it, really uh, good. and it, it doesn't get as dirty as, as quick as you'd think, mm -hmm. especially in like a suit pocket. It just uh, can stay clean and for a And that'd be a time. great, great gentleman's knife for it's sure. It's not too heavy. It's not yeah. going to pull your pants down. Very cool. Yeah, the chaparral. Excellent. Eric, thanks so much for your time oh, thank today. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for it. taking us through all these yeah. cool new knives. We know you guys are going to love these when you get your hands on them. If you want to get your hands on them sooner, uh, if they aren't already, these are going to be up for pre-order on theknifecenter.com. We'll make sure to leave links in the description below. And be sure to keep watching our YouTube channel for all of our great SHOT Show coverage for 2020. Again, Eric, thank you so Always much. Always great sir. working with you guys. Thanks.